Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian, I'm a structural engineer, and this is a piece of paper. Don't say I never teach you anything. So, from a structural perspective, a piece of paper doesn't seem to be that impressive, right? It can basically not even hold its own weight. It's just drooping around um, in this manner. But, without doing any changes to this piece of paper other than that, suddenly this piece of paper can hold something many times its own weight. Is it magic? No. Hang on. Is it that we're distributing shape, form, and producing curvature such that there's a more optimized distribution of material and the forces are carried axially in a more efficient manner? You say yes, Paul. So, this is so important to understand that through curvature, shape, form, we can get advantages in the way we distribute material such that the structure can be more efficient. It's a truly fascinating thing to understand. And we've now looked at cables to arches and how those are related in terms of shape. Now we're going to take an arch and turn it sort of three-dimensional to make a dome and see how those behave. So here's our two-dimensional arch. It carries compression only. If we rotate an arch around, we create a dome. We now have curvature. We now have the ability to take loads in three dimensions, not just in two dimensions. So the forces that are in a dome are ones that go in compression, just like an arch. They travel down from the top to the ground to the support. We actually call this the meridional direction, uh, same as longitude, and they're all in compression, hence all in blue. But because it's three-dimensional, the forces are also carried in another direction, across, around this dome kind of latitude. And those are hoop forces. They're different in that they are in compression at the top and they're in tension around the base. So I showed the tension in red and, and why is there tension at the base here? It's a little bit, if I take a, uh, an elastic band here, it's like if I imagine how a dome would behave as you push down on the top, the bottom wants to spread. If the bottom wants to spread the material of the dome can self-contain that spread by carrying that force in tension. We call these hoop forces, so the base is in tension, hoop tension at the base. We've seen this before actually when I showed you the tide arch, when if you connect the two ends of an arch together, um, that member down there is in tension, it means that it's self-contained, you only need to support it vertically the same way as the dome here at the top is just sitting there on the tabletop. Another advantage of domes is you can put a hole in the top of them. You can't do that with arches. You put a hole in the top of an arch, it collapses. That piece at the top of an arch is called a keystone for very good reason. So a hole in the top of the dome, I'm showing you again those meridional compression forces. They go in the same direction, the same type of behavior. But when they get up to the top where there's air, the way they transfer to the other side is through these hoop forces. It comes up to the top in that arching type direction, and then they go around the top of the opening in compression. So this balance of behavior, this ability to use the curvature of the form, this ability to take forces in two directions at once, we call this um, two directions principal stress lines, principal force lines. Um, they can actually vary within the thickness of the dome. It allows the dome to be more efficient. Um, the most famous dome where we've seen uh, this sort of uh, design and construction is the Pantheon in Rome. There's the opening at the top, the oculus. And now that we've understood about how the forces are carried, you can see there's a reason the part around the opening is solid, because not only is it taking compression up in those direct lines pointing towards the opening, but also once those compression lines get there, they travel around that opening, hence why all of this part of the material is solid. The rest of the dome, which could have been the same thickness as it came down, just continuous thickness, they chose in this case to sort of express the forces that are in it. Again, you see they're going in perpendicular directions here. The, what, the material down here would need to carry some level of tension or otherwise be restrained. And these balance each other out at every single point in the structure. And we've seen this before. 
um, these uh, forces that cross each other at 90 degrees at right angles. I showed this is the Michel minimum weight structure I showed in an earlier video. And this is the efficient way to carry loads through a structure. In fact, even if you have more distributed material, this is what's going on inside a continuous material structure for those forces that are applied to it. Right? So understanding principal stress lines is actually understanding the efficient way all structures behave internally. So there you have it. That's why domes are better than arches.